The Niners have um, opening day of football is Ooh. on Sunday, but it's not opening day. No. Opening day is baseball. So let's compare and contrast opening day of baseball to the beginning of the regular season in the NFL. Okay. This is a, 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 a we're English majors, so we care about language. And this is one that really intrigues me. In baseball, now this was a crazy season, so forget this season, but a regular season that starts in April. The first game is called opening day. You would not say it's the first game. It's mm -hmm. called opening day. Mm -hmm. And it has meanings. Mm -hmm. And no other sport, not the NBA, not the NFL, it's not called opening day. It's called the first game. Right. This is how I understand it, and I've been around. To me, the opening day means it's the first page of the novel. Yeah. It's going to be a long novel that takes six months to complete, and then more with the postseason. And so it means the beginning. It means the beginning of a journey, of a beautiful journey. And it also means, Grant mentioned the other night, the beginning of spring. It's when life is renewed. It's opening day. It's opening yeah. for all that. Now, the game itself is down the list. Written. No. Down the list. Yeah, no. You're like the Giants win, the A's win or lose. Who knows? It's 161 more. It doesn't matter. There is not tension about the game. There is honor for the tradition, for the history, for what it means to America. And there's a particular way to cover that game, right? Like you write, you don't write a lot of game action. You write about what, what, what the air felt like, what, what it yes. looked like to be back, the feeling of it, right? The yes, sights the and sounds. Thing, you yes. know, all the, all the pennants. And most yeah. papers send people, reporters in the stands. So-and-so from Petaluma, what did you think? So How many opening days have you been at? Well, we would never miss exactly. it. Yeah. It's a cultural phenomenon, mm -hmm. and it's phen it's wonderful. I love it. Mm -hmm. Iggy, the, the first game of football is a different phenomenon. You talk about the first game of football. I prefer it. It doesn't have all the pageantry and all the tradition, but like we said, the game in, in baseball doesn't matter, or it's as close to not mattering as a baseball game could be to not mattering. The first game in football matters. Every single game matters in football. If the Niners lose – week one to the Cardinals, they're in DEFCON 4 right now. They're code blue. Because if they lose the next game, then they're have a, then they 0-2. And everyone knows if you start 0-2 in the NFL, like statistically you have about a 9% chance of making the, 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 um, the playoffs. So things get serious right away, especially because they're playing a divisional opponent. That's my favorite thing about the NFL, that every single game is not life or death, but the highest stakes. And that's not any different in September. Yeah, and he, I, I, I love it. I would add one thing. You know, you go to a game, let's say you're opening at home. And there's a lot, of, you know, people are catching passes, they're doing this, you know, nothing's happening. You have lunch, you sit and you see people are talking and you can't hear the field. You got to remember that. It's a pantomime you cannot hear. All of a sudden, there's the kickoff. Okay, it's a kickoff, blah, blah, blah. Let's say you get the ball first. Uh, you know how that works. And all of a sudden, Garoppolo or whoever the quarterback goes under center. And I'm saying to myself, it's really happening. Here we go. I, and I'm excited. Yeah. It's it, like I am excited at a, a boxing match, Iggy. Yep. He, it's like you're about, about to run a race. Happen. You're getting in the, in the blocks, right? Exactly. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, it's about to happen. Here we go. You don't feel that way about baseball. And then they run the first play, whatever it is, and it's such a rush yep. and then you have to sort of calm down because you have your job to do and right. you have to write down in your pad what the play was and all that and it takes me a tiny bit like it took me past the first round of boxing matches to become a journalist again right. and not, not be so excited you know and, and that kind of thing yeah i think i would have a real tough time covering baseball because I, by April 15th, I'd be like, fire the manager. Or who is this first baseman? He's only <laughs> past 10. And like, really, the trick is don't overreact to really anything until May. I, I couldn't do that. I like that in base, in football, the end of the first game, those grades matter. Your, your, your judgments matter. And there's a lot at stake. You've, the, the picture has changed. The weaknesses are clear. The strengths are clear. I love all that about football. Right. Uh, and if, if they win, look. There is no better feeling than winning. If they lose an organization, you have no, it gets dark and, and gray and cloudy. People are unhappy and people are angry and angry at other people in the organization. It's not no where you want to be. No doubt. Because right now is the honeymoon time. They have their yep. plan 
Everything's going according to plan and they trust their plan. Then week one, they see how that really works. How's that new right guard you thought would be good? How's that new <laughs> rookie defensive tackle you really believed in and you, and you praised all off season? Because all those words don't matter anymore. Now you get to see him play in a real game and everyone gets to see him too. So it's no longer the questions all off season that the, the, the coaches get are, what do you think of your rookie defensive tackle? What do you think? Of, what do you think? of? No, 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 no. After in, in five days or whatever it is, it's going to be uh, Kyle. Um, you started Tevin Coleman again. What was that about? Yeah. Kyle. If, 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 if they lose. Yeah. If, that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff. I love that. And what's more, the nature of the uh, news conferences changes because if you're a reporter with guts, you ask those questions. Not all have guts. If you're mm -hmm. a reporter with guts and then the coach doesn't like those questions, doesn't right. like to answer those questions. Right. And you know what? Too bad. That's right. And the coach will give you a a snarky answer or a not that a rude answer. And the idea is to try to back you off from ever asking a question like that ever again. And then you get into a little thing with the guy because you're coming back. Well, if they try to back me off, I would ask it second time harder. Right. That's I right. would ask it harder. And it would mean, you know what? You're not you're not backing me off. Uh, we're going to deal with this and we're going to establish it right now. We'll try your horsepower and my horsepower right here. Remember the time after a crummy season, I asked Jed York, why didn't he fire himself? Yeah, he did. And he yeah, was like, oh, oh, well, technically. I he thought he had fall down on the stage. It was amazing. And people thought I was rude. And my point was, if he wasn't the, the owner's kid, he would have been fired a long time before. Now, he, he has come back. He's done well. But it was the question to ask that day, and people thought it was rude. You know what? Sometimes rude is very good. Uh, I'm in I believe, favor of rude. I believe it was the same day you asked him a question to explain something about the Niners 2-14 and 14 season, and he actually said, Lowell, I don't know what to say. And you said, <laughs> they took the, the microphone away from you. You grabbed him and you said, say something. It was yeah. the best. Oh, oh, I did oh. say that. I say something. Say. That was great. He's supposed to be prepared. You, you you haven't taken that tone with me since I was about eleven years old. I felt bad for for Jed when he when he got it because you could be a thirty five year old man who's not related to you, but if you get if you get talked to like that from Lowell Cone, you feel eleven again, and you say, "Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I won't do it anymore. Just don't put me on timeout." I'm really sorry. And you that's your mom. Out, you're, you're heading for it. You better watch out. Is that your mom or your dad who comes through in those moments? That, oh, the, that's he. That's he. Okay. So it's the elementary school teacher, not the lawyer. Yeah. You know what she also used to do, my mother? She'd say, wait till your father gets home. She used to say that to Carol Ann, my brother, Robert, and me. Wait till your father gets home. It's like, oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> like, oh. Oh my so God. She, she should do that, too.